the well-known poet, philosopher, lawyer, and politician Sir Muhammad Iqbal was born in Lahore, British India, and is sometimes referred to as the spiritual father of Pakistan. His prolific writing in Persian and Urdu literature earned him, the moniker Poet of the East. The two-nation theory, which finally resulted in the division of India and Pakistan, was first put forth by Iqbal. Democracy is a system where people are counted not weighed. But inner experience is only one source of human knowledge. Man is primarily governed by passion and instinct. The thought of a limit to perceptual space and time staggers the mind. Vision without power does bring moral elevation but cannot give a lasting culture. From your past emerges the present, and from the present people who have no hold over their thinking process are likely to be ruined by liberty of thought. Failure is not fatal until we surrender, trying again is the key to glorious victory. Words, without power, is mere philosophy. The ultimate aim of the ego is not to see something, but to be something. Democracy is a system where people are counted not weighed. The new world is as yet behind the veil of destiny in my eyes, however its dawn has been unveiled. The possibility of a scientific treatment of history means a wider experience, a greater maturity of practical reason, and finally a fuller realization of certain basic ideas regarding the nature of life and time. Man is primarily governed by passion. Nations are born in the hearts of poets, they prosper and die in the hands of politicians. A wrong concept misleads the understanding, a wrong deed degrades the whole man and may eventually demolish the structure of the human ego. Destiny is the prison and chain of the ignorant. Understand that destiny like the water of the Nile, water before the faithful, blood before the unbeliever. It is true that we are made of dust. And the world is also made of dust. But the dust has motes rising. Plants and minerals are bound to predestination. The faithful is only bound to divine orders. If faith is lost, there is no security and there is no life for those who do not adhere to religion. The wing of the falcon brings to the king, the wing if the crow brings him to the cemetery. I have seen the movement of the sinews of the sky, and the blood coursing in the veins of the moon. But the universe, as a collection of finite things, presents itself as a kind of island situated in a pure vacuity to which time, regarded as a series of mutually exclusive moments, is nothing and is nothing. Another way of judging the value of a prophet's religious experience, therefore, would be to examine the type of manhood that he has created, and the cultural world that has sprung out of the spirit of his message. The ego is partly free, partly determined, and reaches fuller freedom by approaching the individual who is most free, God. The standpoint of the man who relies on religious experience for capturing reality must it is the mysterious touch of the ideal that animates and sustains the real, and through it alone we can discover and affirm the ideal. Unbeliever is he who follows predestination even if he be Muslim, faithful is he, if he himself is the divine destiny. The truth is that the religious and the scientific processes, though involving different methods, are identical in their final aim. Both aim at reaching the most real. The truth is that the religious and the scientific processes, though involving different methods, are identical in their final aim. Both aim at reaching the most real. It may, however, be said that the level of experience to which concepts are inapplicable cannot yield any knowledge of a universal character, for concepts alone are capable of being socialized. But the perception of life as an organic unity is a slow achievement and depends for its growth on a people's entry into the main current of world events. For centuries Eastern heart and intellect have been absorbed in the question does God exist? I propose to raise a new question new, that is to say, for the East does man exist? The heart is like a mirror. Do not prevent it from being broken. Its breakage is more dearer in the sight of its maker, Allah, than its safety. Almighty Allah being indeed the maker. The ultimate aim of the ego is not to see something, but to be something.